Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ushanka Show – Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Шоу. I think this is an American guy pretending to be a Russian. I mean, Sergei Sputnikov? That's like if I changed my name to John Wayne Cheeseburger. I think this guy is desperate for clicks, but probably has never set foot in the Soviet Union. He doesn't look Russian either. <laughs> Already then. Well, my friends, if you followed Comrade Sputnikov live story here on YouTube, you may notice that I was trying to stick to specific timeline because I was born in 1971 in my early recollections, that's mid of 1970s. And finally, we had arrived into the late 80s, so I finished high school, became a student of Kiev Polytechnical Institute, so this is era of 1988-1989. And made in late 1980s means that Mikhail Gorbachev is at power since 1985. And talking about that era, of course, you need to remember about three horses of doom that Gorbachev introduced to the Soviet society. First was Perestroika, which means reconstruction, Uskarenie, speeding up the economy, and Glasnost, openness or freedom of speech. And I already made several videos on the topic of glasnost in the Soviet Union. Uh, and recently I just posted a long format video, Ushanka Digest, what I call, where I combined uh, four stories. It was about erotic incident. It's about the Soviet Look TV program. It was called The Look. And also when the newspapers were finally telling some truth. And also about Soviet bad girls when we finally learned that there was a prostitution in the Soviet Union. So this, I was kind of like cultivating the soil before today's video. The reason I called today's video Deep Impact, because we're going to talk about events that produced biggest, the deepest impact on minds of the Soviet people, on the vast majority of the Soviet people, probably 90% or more. It changed Soviet vocabulary. It introduced new words to Russian language. And yeah, that was a huge impact. So what happened? On October 16, 1988, exactly 35 years ago at the time of recording this video, today is October 21st, 2023, Soviet people for the very first time were introduced to the Western soap opera. This TV series was called Slave Isaura, Rabinia Isaura, and it was filmed in 1976 in Brazil. So it was filmed in 1976 and only 12 years later it was shown in the Soviet Union in 1988. The show was based on 1875 book by Bernardo Joaquin del Silvio. So he was a famous Brazilian author. So 100 year old book, 12 year old TV series finally shown in the Soviet Union in the final days of the USSR. Fun fact, so originally Rabinia Isaura, Slave Isaura show, consisted of 100 episodes, 25 minutes long each. But after purchasing the rights for the show, Soviet TV producers decided that our people have a longer attention span, so they remade the show and, you know, they trimmed some parts, and now we had 15 episodes, one hour long each. I couldn't find out what kind of expectations Soviet TV producers had for this 12-year-old Brazilian soap opera, but it beat all the expectations. Pretty much the whole country was watching. The penetration level was probably close to 90%, if not higher. Rabinia Izara was shown at 6 p.m., so by that time there will be not a single soul on the street. Everyone, including children, will gather in the living room in the front of TV to watch another episode. One person shared its recollection. He said he thought it would be a good time to go shopping because since everyone is watching TV, there'll be no lines in the store. But when we walked in the store, he realized everyone, like people who work at the store, were and sit in the back room watching TV as well. So he couldn't get service. People just w tell him to wait till the show is over. Because most grocery stores in the Soviet Union were open till 8 p.m. So yeah, it was total craziness. I'm picturing, you know, like a kid that had never tried sugar in his life and suddenly there is a sugar by giant spoons being fed to him. So he has this sugar high, you know, this new experience. There's so much sweetness that just insane. That's pretty much what happened to the whole country 
when this show was introduced in 1988. And I remember my family watching this show. I don't recall my mother ever being so excited to watch TV as she was excited to watch Rabinia Izaura. You know, she'll get ready in advance. She'll put her... Also, she had the big ugly glasses that she only um, wore when she watched TV and she will be all fired up waiting for another episode, you know, following the story of this poor slave girl uh, being chased by this bad, horny uh, son of the plantation owner. Spoiler alert, I don't know if any of you would like to experience Rabinia Izaura. It's probably available on YouTube, but the basic storyline, you know, there's a plantation in Brazil, they have slaves, and they have this highly educated, smart, she can play piano, she looks white, so this slave girl name is Aura, and there is a naughty bad guy who is a son of the plantation owner that after this girl trying to seduce her or force her into have sexual relations, and it's pretty much the whole show about him giving the girl a hard time, torturing her, killing people that she loves just to get laid. So this bad guy, his name was Leoncia, would go as far as tying up his aura to the pole out on the yard. So this is how Soviet people uh, got introduced for the very first time to the BDSM concept. You know, she'll have a piece of wood uh, crammed in her mouth, hands are chained or roped in, and he will torture her, kind of trying to force her into making love to the guy. Besides the cheesy drama, this show also introduced completely alien lifestyle to the Soviet people because, you know, it's Brazil, jungles, plantations, slaves. So all that had a deep impact on the Soviet culture because we had introduced the words like fazenda. I didn't look it up, but I guess fazenda is Brazilian word for plantation. So guess what? After that show, people started calling their dachas, those tiny... Uh, plots of land with a little house they had on it. They said, well, I'm going this weekend to my fazenda. So that became pretty much the new word in Russian language, fazenda. Another expression that got introduced to the Russian language was pahat kak rabinia izaura, so work as hard as a slave as aura. And that reflected the episode when Leoncio, as a punishment, sends Isaura to actual plantation to do manual work out in the field. And that was like such a shock because, you know, she's a fragile kind of office girl. You know, she just lived in the main house, played piano, made tables look pretty. And suddenly she has to be out in the fields digging sugar cane or whatever. So, pahat kak rabinia izaura. Work as hard as slave izaura. And, of course, the hilarious part that Soviet women, so many of them performed really hard manual labor day after day year after year, you know, building roads, laying down railroad tracks, you know, working as a trash collector and so on, they were just crying, feeling so bad for the slave Isaura after she got sent to do manual labor and plantation. And I found this caricature from that time. It's from the Crocodile magazine. It was a Russian, uh, like a humor magazine. And there's two ladies, you know, they work at the collective farm. And one lady tells another, when Leoncio sent Isaura to plantation, my heart was broken. So you see they just carrying milk jugs and a bunch of hay, but they worry so much about poor Isaura. Another interesting side effect of this show is that many girls born around that time were named Isaura. And I don't know how many of them later changed their names again to more normal Inna or Irina, but there was another impact of the Rabinia Isaura show that were a lot of girls named Isaura. And even if you were a guy and you happen to be named Leonid, like Leonid Brezhnev, guess what? You weren't Leonid anymore. Everyone will be calling you Leoncio. Also, Isaura and Leoncio became extremely popular names for the pets. So cats will be, of course, because Leo, Leoncio, so cats will be called Leoncio or Isaura. Another, I can say, main character of the show was this uh, big black lady. She was a cook and her name was Januaria. And she was like big for Soviet standards because we really didn't have a lot of obese people. So guess what? Anybody who was on the chubby side 
they will get a nickname Januaria. So if you want to talk about some person, say, yeah, that Januaria, you know, did this or that, that was kind of a hint that I was a big lady. And of course, because in the beginning of every show, Slave is Out, or there was the same music, same tune played, every Soviet person can repeat those Brazilian words without actually understanding what they're singing. And it's like, Azaza Gunge, Garunge, Urgazun Gunge. I have no idea what it's about, but yeah, that was another fact that everyone knew the tune, everyone could hum those words without understanding what they mean. Even the Soviet children began playing plantation games where one guy will be plantation owner, so he'll be Leoncio, then they pick the prettiest girl and she'll be Zaura. And uh, some ladies, when they uh, recollect those days, they're like, yeah, well, I'll be so envy because this one girl was always picked by boys to be a Zaura because she was so pretty. And then the rest of the guys will be slaves, you know, and then they'll build like plantation main house out of cardboard and it needs to be burned because there was a part of this, one of the episodes that the main house would be burned. And then, of course, you know, they'll play, you know, Leoncia will treat... Uh, is our properly which involves behaviors like involving physical restraints an equal power relationship or pain including the practice of bondage discipline dominance and submission it's actually i'm reading description of bdsm but that's what soviet children were playing this game between is and Leoncio. <laughs> if you follow my channel, you probably remember that a while back I was attempting to introduce you guys to the Soviet culture of anecdotes and that attempt kind of fell flat on its face because it's hard to make a fun fun joke translating, you know, Soviet joke into an English language joke. But guess what? This show also created the whole tsunami of anecdotes, uh, jokes, related to Isaura and Leoncio relationships. Okay, here's another try on a Soviet anecdote. So Leoncio, so the, he's, you know, plantation owner or son of the plantation owner, stumbles upon a pile of human crap in his favorite orchard. So he yells, calls all the slaves, and, you know, he's ready to punish and kill. And he's like, who took a dump here? And one of the slaves replies, Isaura, senor. And then Leoncio falls on his face and starts rubbing uh, crap on his face and moaning, Oh, Isaura, I love you so much. Ha ha ha. God bless Google, I managed to find uh, this article. So, this is introduction called Nakomsta Cesare, Introducing Isaura. So, on Sunday, October 16, uh, Central Television. I forgot to mention, it was shown on the first channel of the Soviet TV. So that channel was shown everywhere. All over the Soviet Union, you could see first channel, no matter which republic you live in. So on October 16, that's when they show that first episode. And they kind of shortly describe Brazil, middle of the last century, uh, still old Emperor Pedro II it keeps the slavery. And so go on about her struggles. And it says, we will show you uh, this soap opera. Of course, we never use the word soap opera. We used a television serial, so it's like a TV series. So we'll show five series this year. And then this week, the next series will be next year. But I think they had to... Uh, speed it up showing the show because uh, there was a, such a big uh, demand uh, to see more. But they did a quality uh, translation, so that was dubbed. So they actually they had a, a professional uh, Soviet actors dubbing the show, so it was done really well. Remember I told you that the whole country pretty much stopped while another episode of Rabinia Zara was shown? And there's an interesting uh, side effect of that. So this guy... Uh, wrote the letter from Krasnokamsk, so that's the probably small uh, town or city somewhere in uh, Siberia and Soviet Russia. And he said, for a long time, I didn't know whom to say thank you uh, for showing Arabinia Isaura show. Uh, to tell the truth, I never watched a single series, but be because during the show, we had hot and cold water in our apartment, so we were just you know, in heaven, enjoying it, 
probably like everyone else who lived in Krasnokamsk, above the third level apartment. So, you know, we have a nine story apartments, but because water pressure is so low, they hardly ever had a hot or cold water above the third level. So during the show, no one was using water. So I said, it was great because, you know, while people were watching show, we could take a bath and we could do the laundry. So we really would like to another show that popular to be introduced to the Soviet people so we can enjoy our conveniences. So that's pretty cool. And of course, I must mention that Arabinia is our, a slave is our show did a huge impact not only on the Soviet Union because it was shown for the first time in Eastern Europe in Hungary. And I believe it was a pretty big impact there too. If anyone is watching this uh, Ushanka show from Hungary, please comment and tell me about your experience. Then it came to Poland. Once again, huge impact. 81% of population watched the show in Poland. Once again, I would love to see comments from my Polish viewers. I don't think I have many, but I have a few. And that China also watched uh, Isaura show. And, you know, it's I guess because politically it was showing slavery and anti-slavery message. So it was okay to show in a socialist country. So Slave Isaura was the very first show in China that featured non-Chinese main character. And uh, probably beat all the records in China because of such a large population. Still, Slave is our holds till now world record for most dubbed show in the world. And we're talking about 1976 TV series from Brazil. How about that? And probably some of you guys are wondering, so what about Comrade Sergei? That Comrade uh, Sputnikov was glued to TV screen just like other Soviet citizens. And I can proudly reply, no. I did not watch the show. I probably watched first episode or maybe half of the first episode. But for some reason, I didn't find it interesting. Uh, so I had to do a lot of research because I said, I remember seeing my parents being glued to TV and generally this whole Fazenda culture, Isaura, Leoncio, Plantace, all this new language, lingo that came to the Russian language. But tell you the truth, I think I didn't have interest because I didn't find the main character attractive. Uh, the actress that played Isaura is just was not pretty on my, uh, according to my standards, I guess. Or, so I just had no interest to see the show. It's Kind of shallow attitude, but that's what happened. I mean, I was only 17 at that time. And I was never a big fan of watching long TV series, especially soap operas, because, you know, after Slave is Aura, it was just a flood of TV shows. Then, of course, American TV shows came in, uh, Twin Peaks, Santa Barbara, and others. But I had no interest to in watching those. The only TV series that I really got hooked on was X-Files. There's no reason uh, to hide it. That's when I will drop everything and run and watch another episode. X-Files, yes, I was enjoying it. And it was the only TV series that I truly had, like, I had to stop whatever I'm doing and run to TV. And I actually made a rule for myself that I don't watch TV series. I would watch movies, sure. But I stay away from TV series. It's just so much time being consumed wasted you know watching this hundreds of episodes i mean there are some exemptions of course chernobyl i had to watch that and i'm planning to rewatch it again band of brothers the pacific the queen's gambit those yes i watched every episode and it was fantastic but otherwise my wife sometimes hey there's a new series like nope i'm not interested in watching a tv series but there are some exemptions of course but back to Slave is Our Show. So they had a several reruns after this initial success. They end up kind of adding everything that they cut out because people wanted to see the real grand finale because I believe originally they removed it. But after that, you know, there was a flood of American TV shows and other Mexican TV shows. Oh my goodness, list is long. And my mother, I'm so proud of her, when she started watching another uh, soap opera from Brazil, I think it was called Bagate Toja Plachet, The Rich People Also Crying. 
and she's like, this is all the same crap. Like, you know, a girl uh, has an accident and she forgets everything, forgets, you know, loses her memory in the hospital. She doesn't recognize anybody. You know, so same drama, same those twists, which was like fresh and brand new in Slave is Aura. She picked it up right away in the next show and she stopped watching TV series. So that's kind of like, I'm proud of my mom that she recognized quickly and quit. But as I mentioned, they had a, several reruns and then they actually made a Russian remake. So same story, same everything, but it was made uh, by Russian uh, TV studio. But I also found extremely interesting that, you know, even as Soviet people and later, you know, Russian, Ukrainian uh, population was introduced to TV series concept or soap opera concepts uh, with the foreign goods, you know, that Slave is our, uh, from Brazil, then of course Santa Barbara, Twin Peaks, all the other shows. So they were introduced to this concept through the foreign goods, but over the years they slowly uh, shifted to the domestic product. So originally, you know, Soviet studios, Russian studios had no experience of making that type of product. TV series, but now they got really good at it, probably with the help of the Russian government. And now probably 90% of the TV series on Russian TV, it's a domestic product. You know, Russian viewers are not really interested in American TV shows. They're watching mostly local production. And I also must mention the following. It's kind of sad to see how easy Soviet viewers fell for this cheesy, sugary drama, Slave is Aura. You know, they had high quality movies. Of course, a lot of movies, you know, generally the whole mass media was under harsh control of the Soviet government, but still we had a lot of amazing movies, not TV series, but it just tells you that large swath of the population cared less about good stuff. They just wanted this super sweet, super cheesy, drama infused shows and that's what um, Slave is Aura introduced them to and Soviet Union was never the same since then. Okay my friends, okay my Leoncios and Uzauras, uh, thank you for watching another episode of Shanka Show. Don't forget to support my work with your likes, with your comments, with your super thanks and with your membership. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания, goodbye.